Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Lasha, and today we're going to have a look at the Australian Ice Hockey League. So the AHL has been operating in its current form for about 20 years, consisting of between 6 and 9 teams, spread out over most major cities in Australia. So right now there's 8 teams active in the league, they're based in Newcastle, Sydney, Canberra, Melbourne, Adelaide and Perth, with Sydney having two teams and Melbourne having two teams. Two more teams have been added this season on a probationary basis, one of which is in Brisbane and the other one in the Central Coast. Those two teams are only playing exhibition games and we'll have to wait and see if they end up actually playing in the league after this year. So teams play a 28 game home and away season from the beginning of April to the first weekend of September. There are no playoffs in this league. The top four teams from the regular season go on into a finals weekend where number four plays number one and number three plays number two. And the winner of those two games plays for the Goodall Cup. Teams travel a lot in this league. So when Sydney on the East Coast have to go and play against Perth on the West Coast, they've got to fly 3,500 kilometers or 2,000 miles for that weekend. And when teams are playing between Adelaide, Melbourne and Sydney, all of those cities are about a thousand kilometers away from each other. Canberra, Sydney, Newcastle are all actually very close to each other. There are only about 300 Ks between all of them. But apart from those teams playing each other, everybody else has to fly to play. So unlike a lot of minor pro leagues, you actually fly a lot in the RHL. You don't really get big bus trips going, you know, from like one city all the way down one side of the country over to the other side on like a 21 day road trip. Another reason for that, games are only on Friday, Saturday and Sundays. There's no midweek games in this league. Taking a look at the rosters, teams are allowed to dress five imports per game, but a few teams actually carry maybe six or seven through the season just in case they get injury. And as well, there's a few guys that live in Australia that don't actually meet the criteria for being a local player and they still count as an import. To be considered local in Australia, you pretty much have to be a permanent resident or a citizen, of course, of Australia or New Zealand. Pretty much all the imports are minor pro players from North America and Europe playing stuff like SBHL, ECHL, uh, you know, like second division in like France and Germany and Sweden and stuff like that. But occasionally we do get players with AHL experience and we've had a few guys that are draft picks or have played a few games in the NHL. But for the most part, it's around that upper SBHL, lower ECHL kind of level. So most Australian players are not at that level of skill. Most guys have some experience playing overseas, either doing like AAA, um, minor or a bit of junior A or like in some cases, some like like minor pro stuff. There's a few guys that go over and play Div 2 in Sweden. A lot of guys also go over to Canada and play at academies, simply for the fact that we can't go and try out for teams. Like if we're gonna go over there, it's gonna cost five grand, 10 grand to go over with your mum or your dad when you're, you know, 14, 15 years old. So at least if you're going to an academy, you know you're definitely gonna have, you know, on the ice every day, you can have a coach, you've got something to do. You're not just kind of throwing everything into the wind and going overseas to try and get, you know, picked up by a junior team. But then also there's a lot of guys that haven't played any hockey outside of Australia. So arenas are a mixed bag in Australia, but one thing you know for sure, none of them were designed to actually be a hockey arena for a minor pro hockey team or anything like that. None of the teams actually own their rinks, except for in Newcastle's case, but that's more of a situation of the owner of the rink also owns the team rather than a franchise purchasing a venue or renting a venue to actually run their business out of. Some of the rinks in the league don't even have glass. You've got to get changed in like a party room rather than a locker room. And they've only got capacity for, you know, like three to 400 people. And that's obviously owing to the fact that these arenas weren't built for hockey. They were built for recreational skating. In saying that though, there are some rinks like the O'Brien Arena in Melbourne you can fit 2,000 people in there. It's a really, really great rink. It's got glass. As well, that's got two sheets of ice, so it's got a purpose-built hockey rink, and then it's got a rink that doesn't have glass that's for recreational skating. And then pretty much every rink is somewhere in between there. So during the season, teams usually have about a one-hour practice twice a week. That's due to two things. First of all, because as we said before, Teams don't own the rinks or rent out the rinks that they play in on a full-time basis, so they can't just jump in and get ice time whenever they feel like it. Second of all, because there's actually not many rinks. Like we said before, 20 rinks in the entirety of Australia. So there actually isn't much opportunity to get an hour of ice time at a prime time in the evening when every other like 
recreational team wants to play games or train, and then there's state teams, there's figure skating, there's, you know, skate discos and, like, recreational skating stuff that goes on at the same time. And the other big thing, most of the players have a day job, so the players can't go down and have a morning skate at 11 a.m. or, you know, an optional skate in the afternoon. Everybody's at work. All right, now getting into the nitty-gritty of what we mean by pro hockey. So although there has been undeniable growth in ice hockey in Australia, in the AHL in the past 20 years, the league definitely still sits somewhere in the fuzzy line between amateur and semi-pro. The league is actually an amateur league on paper, so when you sign your contract, there's a clause in there that effectively makes you not able to receive money for playing hockey. In saying that though, most players have absolutely every single expense covered, including, you know, like travel, insurance, all that kind of stuff. Some players also get stuff like accommodation, vehicles, uh, food allowance, stuff like that, but they're mostly the higher end players and guys that have moved into city to play. And there are also players that actually play kind of like fly in, fly out. So they'll fly into a city for the end of the week to do training and then play their games or meet them on the road somewhere. And like the team takes care of all of their travel and their you know expenses to do that. And there are definitely situations where players are getting paid in some way or another, either through the team or through a sponsor, but that's very rare and nobody's making a living off it. So this obviously brings the issue of, well, some players are getting paid, some players aren't getting paid. And it's not so much an issue with the players that aren't getting paid, but are still have all of their, you know, expenses covered, all their fees covered. There are guys on some teams and they actually have to pay to cover their fees, cover their travel and stuff like that. And then what happens is you got a hockey game and you got one guy on one side of the ice that's making tens of thousands of dollars or thousands of dollars playing and then lining up against him on the other side of the ice is a guy that works just as hard as he does, still putting something into the league, creating the whole, you know, product that's being sold through the RHL, but he's not getting his fees covered. Like, he's having to pay to be there. And with other leagues, rich teams and poor teams, of course they exist, but it might be something like, well, one team can't quite reach the cap. They've got to go under it. Or one team has, like, not as good facilities as the other team. But in the RHL, what can happen is you can have a team of players that are paid to be there playing against a team with, you know, maybe a third of the guys having to pay their own fees to be there. And that's not a very good look. And as a player in the league, seeing us filling, you know, 1,500 people in the stands, it's a pretty hard thing to stomach. And all this leads into, well, how good is the ad shell? What kind of level are we talking here as far as play-wise? It's difficult for me to say because as an adult, I've only played in the AHL, but from guys who have played minor pro overseas and looking at footage from minor pro leagues overseas, it's probably somewhere around the FPHL level or maybe like Division 3, Division 2 Sweden, somewhere there. So we really are looking like the lower end of minor pro. And I think there's a really clear reason for that. So all the things that we've talked about as far as like teams not earning the rinks, not having enough time on the ice, not being able to commit fully to a playing hockey because you've also got a day job. All of these factors impact the local Australian player's ability to kind of train up to that level of a minor pro because we just don't have the ice time and we've got our normal jobs, we've got everything else in life to think about and we aren't just focusing on ice hockey. There's a few reasons for that, you know, like you can't really pay a salary to, you know, 20 guys on a team when you've only got stands for 350 people. And also a lot of young guys that would be pushing through and persevering through to making that level leave the game when they turn 18 and 19 years old because they actually financially can't afford to do it anymore. And you can see a lot of the players in Australia who are the elite players did go overseas and they did build into their early 20s playing minor pro or something like that. But guys don't have those opportunities to kind of like go through Bantam, Midget AAA and then play junior, you know, for three years or four years and then maybe go to university and then try and get into a league like the Fed or the SB and really keep that ball rolling and then eventually end up as somebody who's 25, 30 years old, is a minor pro player for sure, but is definitely a solid player and somebody that can come in, make differences and have all of those skills that you know the Australian players are kind of clawing out to try and get just completely on lock because they've been doing it as pretty much their day job since they were like, you know, 13 years old. And unfortunately, it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing here where unless the teams and the league kind of open up to more of an audience and, you know, build the league up to get more people in, 
they won't be able to have the money and the resources to you know allow players to do that kind of stuff but as well there aren't the rinks there in the first place for a lot of teams to really build into you know getting a thousand two thousand people at their games and actually making money off the game ticket sales and as well then opening up you know broadcasting and stuff like that getting better sponsors in because they don't have the money to kind of do any of that in the first place. So like the whole structure of the AHL, the way the league works and the individual teams and stuff like that, it is really difficult for to see that league, build the fan base and then be able to offer the players something to keep them going and then allow them to develop into what would be a standard minor pro hockey player. And I think for the AHL, all of that's kind of been put into a too hard basket and there doesn't really seem to be any will to kind of build the league in that way, give the players the opportunity and really drive the growth in that way to get the league out into a bigger audience and really turn it into a professional league and become something like the professional leagues in the minor hockey countries like the UK and stuff like that. And the other big issue is geography. Like Australia is in the other hemisphere and on the other side of the world to North America and Europe. So it's not easy for our players to actually go somewhere, get all that experience, and then come back and use it in Australia. So if you don't have tens of thousands of dollars to afford to go to an academy, or just the money to go over and do tryouts at a bunch of teams and try and get a spot, then doing any more hockey outside of Australia just isn't a possibility. And if you are good and you stay locally, most guys just step out of the level that they're in because they're way too good, because you're jumping from pretty much recreational or minor hockey through to almost a minor pro league. So there isn't any of those adjoining steps for players to take. So if they can't go overseas to get those, it's really difficult for them to, you know, try and make that leap. Putting all that aside though, as far as having something, the RHL is definitely better than nothing. Um, it allows people to play past the point where they would have not been able to play anymore if they were doing minor pro, you know, somewhere else and not making much money. Like I've got a full-time job, I've got a family. There's a lot of guys like that that keep playing. And a lot of those guys are actually the higher level guys that have gone through and played all that stuff and then have ended up staying in the league playing as like a veteran guy and a lot of the skill of the league is tied up in those guys so there is a bit of a double-edged sword there you know like if you stay as it is now those guys can keep playing but then if you move over to be a proper minor pro league a lot of those guys wouldn't play anymore because they've got you know their careers to worry about in saying that though you know if you're focusing on building the sport as a whole then that's the kind of thing that you're going to have to sacrifice. Anyway, guys, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you think I've missed anything and have another question or two for me, make sure you throw them down in the comments. I played in the Australian Ice Hockey League for a number of years. I moved over to a new league called the Pacific Hockey League, which is a semi-professional league running at the same time as the AIHL. I'm doing a vlog for my 2022 season. I've been tracking it from all the way back in January when I started doing my pre-season. So make sure you go check out the Aussie Semi-Pro Hockey Life vlog and see what it's actually like like to play in these kind of leagues, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.